Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. You're going to be hearing from six fantastic universities who will each speak to you for about six minutes on their own university. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. Use the, Q the question and answer button, the Q&A button you see on your screen, to ask questions of any of our presenters at any time. Ask them about their university, about the application for admission, really anything related to college admissions is fair game there. Your camera and your microphone are turned off so the panelists won't be able to see or hear you so the Q&A really is the one way you have to interact with us. This is just one of uh, many different sessions being held. There's one more session coming up after this so be sure to sign up there if you haven't already. Also the session's being recorded as are all of the other sessions that have happened uh, so come back in about a week and you'll be able to find those at strivescan.com slash B-A-C-S. So now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Vanderbilt University. All right, I have to stop the video. I have to mute, unmute myself. I have to screen share. Okay, everybody, am I good, Josh? You look great, Jan. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks for your patience while I got the technology going. Um, and welcome to the session. So excited to be here tonight with my fantastic colleagues. Uh, I'm uh, at Vanderbilt University. My name is Jan Suter. Usually I'm at the end of the alphabet and I go last, but I get to go first this time. Uh, so without further ado, very excited to be here. I am uh, broadcasting from the second bedroom of my apartment where I have been for the past 13 months. Uh, this is a beautiful photograph of our gorgeous campus and I am missing it. I'm missing our students. We are certainly missing connecting in person with our prospective students like you and families and certainly hope to return to that uh, sometime in the not too distant future. But again, this is a photo of our gorgeous campus. Uh, we are located in the middle of Nashville, Tennessee, which is in the middle of um, Tennessee, which is kind of in the middle of the Eastern states, east, east of the Mississippi. We do have all four seasons, uh, spring probably being my favorite. And we get about eight months of spring and summer. We do get snow and people really kind of lose their minds. We don't know what to do with snow, uh, but we have a long growing season. We are one 330 acre pedestrian friendly connected campus. On our campus, we have our undergraduate university. You'll see some uh, statistics about it coming up next. We have our graduate schools and then we have a medical center all on one gorgeous connected campus, uh, pedestrian friendly, very green in the middle of the fabulous city of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, so moving along to my next slide, um, Vanderbilt at a glance. Uh, this is getting to know us by some of the numbers. Uh, we consider ourselves to be a mid-sized research residential liberal arts university, and we're going to unpack that a little bit. So mid-sized, we have a total of about 7,000 undergraduates. We are a little bit bigger than we are in previous years. Um, we have another 6,000 or so graduate students, which takes um, our total student population to about 13,000, which is mid-sized but I'm representing Vanderbilt University, so absolutely focus on undergraduate teaching and learning on our campus. We've got 70 majors, fields of study, also known as disciplines. If you add in our, our minors and our five-year programs, it takes our academic offerings to over 100, and they are sprinkled among our four undergraduate-focused academic colleges, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. But again, you're at a university, so we do have graduate schools and a lot of those resources trickle down to our students. Our students, come from everywhere. You're gonna see a map in just a moment, all walks of life, all backgrounds, all disciplines, all areas of interest, all experiences, all sorts of passions. And they have done a lot of interesting things in high school. They've come to our campus and they've created 475 different student organizations. Those are of the students, by the students, for the students. 44% of our students identify as students of color. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are Vanderbilt values. We have an inclusive, supportive campus that really celebrates and supports different ideas and different um, backgrounds and experiences. And the most important number are three to one squirrel to student ratio, which again, is just a really cute way of saying that we have a beautiful green campus. Uh, this map will show you at a glance demographics in terms of the geographic dispersal of our students from 49 states, just lacking someone from North Dakota. Um, most of our population, I get this question a lot, is not from the state of Tennessee. About 93% of our students are from other states. About 10 to 11% of our population is international. Our students are intersectional. Uh, they don't identify themselves as one thing or in one way. They are very, very talented. They come from the depth and breadth of high schools and backgrounds. 60% of them are from public schools, which means 40% are from private, independent, parochial, homeschooled 
Your job at Vanderbilt is to become a critical thinker and a problem solver. We want you coming to our campus, supporting one another, collaborating, connecting. We want you to challenge one another because that's an important part of the Vanderbilt experience in a really, really inclusive and respectful environment. Um, those 100 different majors, minors, five-year programs, again, you will find uh, sprinkled among our four different academic colleges. Uh, but two important things to say is that at our heart and soul, we're a liberal arts university. That means gaining knowledge and skills from a lot of different areas. So our students will dabble and explore. They'll receive a lot of advising and support. In most cases, two full years to land on a major probably won't take you that long. 30% of our students double major and about 50% of our students have a major and a minor. But we don't just define learning at Vanderbilt as what's your major because learning encompasses things like immersive experience, such as study abroad, research, internships, getting involved in community service, uh, maybe joining an acapella group. These, this 50% of your Vanderbilt experience that happens outside of the classroom is so important. We've created a program called Immersion Vanderbilt so to, to support and celebrate students and make sure that everyone has access to immersive experiences. We require our students to complete one keeping in mind that our students, many of them are completing multiple immersive experiences. It's that uh, marriage of knowledge and experience, which is really important. Um, we do have a residential college model. So at our heart and soul, we are a residential university. 95% of our students live on campus all four years. Residential colleges means that living and learning takes place not just in the classroom, but outside of the classroom where you're living with other students. As a first year student, you will live with 16 other first year students in an area called the Commons, which has 10 houses. You'll actually live with a faculty head of house. So imagine being at a university where you're not only taught by faculty in all of your classes, but you're actually connecting with students and faculty and others in a really, really supportive, inclusive environment that we describe as collaborative um, as opposed to competitive. Again, our students are involved uh, outside of the classroom, our Vanderbilt programming board, uh, allows our students to be involved in bringing campus speakers and performers, but we have, again, those 475 different organizations, lots of ways to get involved. And again, in the fabulous city of Nashville, Tennessee, I've lived here for about nine years and there's really no other place like it. Um, and our campus is located right in the middle of Nashville. That's it, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jen. Up next is Jason from Wheaton College. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jason LaPerriere, and I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Wheaton College in Massachusetts. Um, diving right in, in a nutshell, Wheaton is a small private liberal arts college. We're home to approximately 1,700 students coming to campus from across the country and around the world. Just over 10% of our student body um, uh, is coming to us from international locations around the world. Uh, Wheaton is an incredibly undergraduate focused institution. Um, we actually don't have graduate programs on our campus, so we don't have graduate students distracting your faculty members um, or teaching any classes. 100% of our classes are taught by faculty, and those classes are small, 15 to 20 on average discussion based seminar style, so you can really dive in. Um, and engage with your faculty members in the material right away, including in uh, in your first year. In terms of our location, we're located in the town of Norton, Massachusetts, which is consistently ranked among the top 10 safest communities in the United States. Uh, we're situated in a suburban area right between uh, Boston and Providence, uh, which really gives students the best of both worlds in terms of um, how, giving them access um, to two of New England's largest cities through the train station that's about 10 minutes away from our campus, uh, while also allowing them to enjoy the, the beautiful, safe residential campus that they're living and learning on. Um, our campus spans about 400 acres, has a very traditional New England feel, uh, and it's just a beautiful space for, uh, for our students. In terms of aspects that really help differentiate Wheaton from some of the other small liberal arts colleges you might be looking at, uh, one is definitely our Compass curriculum. Uh, our Compass curriculum is unique in that out of the 32 classes you'll take uh, before you graduate, only three requirements are built into the curriculum, which really puts you in the driver's seat of your education. You'll work incredibly closely with uh, staff and faculty advisors to craft an educational experience that's truly unique to you, instead of simply completing a standardized set of general education requirements. 
In terms of the, the three requirements that are built in, uh, those are in the blue circle on your screen. The first you'll complete is an interdisciplinary first year experience course in your first semester. It's an interdisciplinary approach to a topic, but also serves as an introduction to Wheaton in your academic experience. Second requirement is a sophomore year experience course, which will be experiential in some way, it might be an internship, research, study abroad. I'll talk about why that's important in just a moment, but the key is that it won't be a traditional class, it will be something experiential. Third and final requirement is that you have a major and complete the requirements for that major. Uh, there are a number of optional components you can take advantage of, including honors programs, study abroad, over half of our students study abroad before they graduate. Double majoring is popular. We have 100 plus majors and minors for students to choose from. Um, so if you can't choose between a couple of your favorite things, double majoring is um, easy and, uh, and a popular option for students. About a third of our students choose to do so. Um, and we have quite a breadth of, uh, of academic programs to choose from. Our top three programs really exemplify that breadth. Um, and those are business, biology, and psychology. Another really unique aspect of the Wheaton experience is that we guarantee every single student a funded internship or research experience by the time they reach senior year. That's called our Wheaton Edge program. Two big promises coming through that program. One is that you'll have that meaningful experiential learning opportunity when you reach senior year and are applying to jobs in grad school. The second is that it will be paid. If your internship sponsor isn't paying you directly, you'll actually be compensated directly from Wheaton, the average eight-week summer internship compensated with a $3,000 stipend. 96% uh, of our students live on campus in a typical year, so incredibly residential and community oriented. We guarantee housing for all four years. Uh, we have 19 residence halls and 16 student run theme houses, which I describe essentially as clubs with housing. We have a really popular outdoors house, feminist perspectives house, together we all prosper uh, for men of color. Um, the really great thing of, uh, about the theme houses is that they don't self-isolate. Um, one of the requirements of their charter is that they put on programming to the entire campus community um, to promote their mission uh, and bring people in to, um, to engage with their activities. Um, so that residential aspect, a key component to the experience at Wheaton. Because so many of our students are living on campus, they fully take advantage of uh, immersing themselves in campus life. We have 100 plus clubs and organizations to choose from, 21 NCAA uh, Division III athletic teams. We do have uh, a rather unique Division I synchronized swimming team, just one in six in the nation. About a quarter of our students are varsity athletes, so it really creates a culture of school spirit, uh, while at the same time, if you're not involved in varsity athletics, if that's not your thing, uh, it's not an overwhelming component to campus life. We're part of the NUMAC conference, competing against schools like MIT, Mount Holyoke, and Babson, just to name a few. Uh, our students do extremely well after graduating, 97% success rate within six months, uh, and you can see a snapshot of the direction students are going. It's worth noting that grad school is a popular destination for our students. Um, about half of our students will enroll in a graduate program within five years of graduating. Um, in terms of rankings and recognition, just some quick highlights on your screen. Um, my One of my favorites uh, is the, the top 50 ranking amongst national liberal arts colleges, and that's really because it focuses on student satisfaction, not only of our current students, but also of alumni in terms of how they feel they were prepared for life after graduation. Um, and also, as a uh, having been a first-generation college student myself, uh, we were recently recognized nationally uh, as being a first-gen forward institution. Um, I hope this piqued your interest and that you'd like to learn more about Wheaton College. We have a number of ways you can interact with us virtually this spring if you head to our website um, or scan that QR code on your screen. Thanks so much for your attention. Enjoy the evening. Thanks so much, Jason. And next, we will hear from Mason from the University of Chicago. All right. All right, awesome. Uh, so good evening, everyone. My name is Mason Heller, and I am an admissions officer at the University of Chicago. Uh, I graduated uh, from Chicago in 2015, um, and I'm originally from the Bay Area. So uh, I wish I could be out there meeting you in person, but just excited to talk to you about um, UChicago. Um, UChicago is known as being this place of ideas. Our students love talking about ideas, debating ideas, coming, uh, you know, coming up with new ways of thinking of things and new ideas. Uh, so uh, being a place of ideas, that's really who we are, I think, uh, in the heart of, uh, of our students. 
Um, first off, I want to talk about the ac ac academic experience and something that I think makes U Chicago re really distinctive as a place to go to college. Uh, two things I want to highlight. Uh, one is our core curriculum. So as a liberal arts college situated within a, 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 you know, a research university, uh, as part, part of the college, every student uh, will take these core classes uh, in these different fields. And um, this really is the bread and butter of a Chicago, Chicago education. The core teaches you how to think, how to critically engage with ideas, um, and, and to communicate your ideas through your written work and through um, you know, oral discussion. These are discussion-based classes, capped at 19 students, taught by faculty. Uh, and so they, they can be a really rewarding part of your experience. And while every student meets the same core requirements, how you meet them can differ. Uh, within each requirement, there are a lot of different options to choose from. You can really craft your own uh, path through the core. One example would be in the humanities. Uh, and when we think about the humanities, usually we think about literature, but uh, you know, how do we understand the human experience? Well, there's a lot of ways to do that. So uh, there are nine different uh, options you can choose from within the humanities sequences in the core. One is called media aesthetics. And for media aesthetics, one of our tour guides is very proud of this fact, um, but he's written every essay for that class about Beyonce. So if you wanna set that goal for yourself, you have a lot of fun, um, but uh, there's a lot of options within the core to kind of make it your own. The second, second thing I want to highlight is that you know, you're part of this tight-knit uh, undergraduate college. Everyone's underneath the same roof. You don't apply to particular majors or a particular school within the university. You apply to the college as a whole. And once you get to Chicago, every major is open to every student. Every class is open to every student. You're connected to this you know, research university that has nine different professional and graduate schools. Every single one of our professional and graduate schools has an undergraduate program. So every professor at Chicago has vested interest in undergraduates. Uh, and be, uh, so there's lots of opportunities to take graduate level coursework, do research with a graduate professor, um, um, or you know, uh, participate in even about a dozen or so joint degree programs where you can earn a bachelor's and a master's in less time. So a couple of the things I wanna highlight in terms of your academic experience, Outside of the classroom, uh, again, 80% of our students get, and undergraduate students get involved with research. We manage three national laboratories, Argonne Lab, Fermi Lab, and the Marine Biological Lab out in Woodsell, Massachusetts. Um, we also have over 160 research centers on campus. Um, as bright as you are, you're not in it alone. Uh, you have a full-time academic advisor and a full-time career advisor to help navigate the curriculum and different opportunities. Um, one I want to highlight are these careers in programs. Uh, within these careers and programs, these are pre-professional programs that offer internships, uh, and a lot of also opportunities for first-year students, like treks. Uh, we fly groups of students out to different cities all across the globe to meet with industry leaders and alumni, uh, or you can do a micro-internship, um, uh, get involved with like a one-month, two-month project. Uh, we have the Metcalf Internship Program. We offered over 2,700 paid internships last year. These are just for Chicago students. Um, and they run 800 different employers, 150 different cities in 35 different countries. So you really can, really runs the gamut in terms of what you can explore in, in, in terms of careers throughout your four years. And uh, we see it pays dividends for our students. 95% of students at the time of graduation have a job in place or going to graduate school or some other substantive plans. Um, last, I wanna finish up talking about the community at Chicago. Your first introduction to the community is through our housing system. And one note about the housing system, there are no freshman houses. Everyone is mixed together. So you instantly become friends with upperclassmen. Um, there's also, uh, it's an eclectic mix of students in your house. Students from all different backgrounds, walks of life, different parts of the country and the globe. Um, we have over 100 countries represented on our, on our campus. Over 100 languages are spoken amongst our students. Uh, so it's a, a really dynamic and diverse uh, group of people that you instantly become friends with. And there's lots of fun house traditions we have. One is our annual scavenger hunt. It is the world's largest annual running scavenger hunt. We're very proud of that. A lot of inner house rivalries that compete against each other. Uh, another uh, way you see kind of inner house rivalries on campus is through sports, through intramural teams. Every house is an intramural team. They all compete against each other. And if you can chew gum and walk in a straight line, you can do intramural sports. It's really for everybody. Uh, we also have about uh, 40 or so different club teams like water polo, crew, uh, rugby, uh, fencing, um, ultimate frisbee, uh, and then our 20 different varsity teams. Um, last in terms of community is the city of Chicago. Uh, it's kind of a boon to our students. We make it very easy to explore the wonderful city that is Chicago. 
Um, uh, you absolutely don't need a car in Chicago. Uh, there's great access to public transit. And as a student, you get something called U-Pass, which gives you unlimited rides to Chicago public transit. Um, you also have your Arts Pass, which gives you free admission to over 70 different cultural attractions in the city, including uh, the world-renowned Chicago Symphony Orchestra, uh, Lyric Opera, et cetera. Uh, so I just want to leave you with one last thing on the application process to Chicago, and that and these are essay prompts. Yes, these are real essay prompts. Um, but anyway, I just want to say thank you for uh, hearing about Chicago. Uh, please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A uh, and get in touch, um, and I'll hand it back over to Josh. Thanks so much. And next, we're going to hear from Ricky from Loyola University, New Orleans. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Ricky Alarcon, and I am with Loyola University, New Orleans. Uh, I am a, a regional representative that lives in Dallas, Texas, but I cover all Western United States, including the great state of California. Uh, again, Loyola is a small private Catholic institution, uh, Jesuit institution as well. Uh, located in the city of New Orleans, roughly about 3,200 students call Loyola home. Uh, we offer about 110 different uh, academic programs, and then we have a lot of organizations, things to do on our campus to get the students engaged. Uh, if you've uh, ever been to the city, it's a great city, uh, but this is like a snapshot to kind of show you what where our students come from. 54% uh, of our students do come from out of state. California, Texas, Florida are top three states. Uh, a lot of our students are first generation, meaning first time in college, and as well as the female and male breakdown, as well as our students of color. Again, I think this speaks about where our students come from, from all parts of the U.S. Uh, and all types of demographics. Again, New Orleans is great, I think eclectic, artsy town with lots of things to do, uh, museums, concerts, of course our festivals are, are worldwide renowned. Um, and then of course you have, uh, you know, just places around the, the city like Audubon Park, which is right across the street from our campus. This huge green space where students can just, you know, take their bikes, uh, go around the track a few times. If you're a jogger, walker, or just want to read a book under a tree, it's a great green space to kind of just relax either before or after class. Again, we're about 20, like 25 minutes uh, away from downtown area. If you can see my map here, it's kind of small, but if you can see the French Quarter located up here, uh, and then you take St. Charles Street, that'll take you, you're going west. That will take you to the front of our campus. You might know another university right next door to us, uh, Tulane University, which is a larger school. But again, we kind of share the space here. And of course, uh, very close to Audubon Park, which actually has the city zoo. I forgot to mention that uh, is housed there. And of course, New Orleans is known for a lot of things, but it's food, culture, festivals, and even like you never know who might be shooting a movie here in the city. Actually, they've called us the Hollywood of the South. And we are divided into three different colleges, the College of Arts and Science, College of Business, and the College of Music and Media. Most people would know us probably because of our music and media. We do have the traditional vocal, jazz studies, uh, performance. Uh, we also have programs that are kind of hard to find. Uh, music uh, therapy program, one of the oldest in this part of the United States. This music industry studies is another program which not only do you learn about your talent and your craft, but you also learn the business side of that, how to get paid for your music, how to enter contracts, negotiate contracts. We also have a great theater program, uh, design and um, digital filmmaking, actually. I mentioned how there's a lot of movies being made here. Uh, and then also one of the oldest uh, journalism programs in this part of Louisiana. Uh, number two is probably our business school. We offer a lot of business programs. We are a port city. So trade, commerce, very, very close relationships with the, the city. So accounting, management, economics, typically those are pretty popular. Four is our sciences. We do offer the traditional biology, chemistry, but we also have some, uh, we have specialization in marine biology. If you're into doing research and want to study the different reptiles and plant life, here in this part of the United States, uh, we are, will definitely help you with that. We do offer pre-med as well. And then of course, we are starting to offer nursing, a direct entry to nursing this fall, 2021. Another pro popular program, psychology, and of course, criminal justice. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we are a liberal arts institution. So we do highly encourage students to double major and minors. Um, doing research, that's part of our 
Jesuit philosophy, you, you know, mastering the certain subjects and the more subjects that our students are, can get involved in, the better. Um, so, you know, business or if the business student wants to take, you know, music they can or a neuroscience student wants to take uh, one of our media programs, we can definitely help you out with that. As well as we do offer that experiential experience for our students, which means studying abroad, um, traveling the world. We have agreements with 80 uh, different countries. And of course, our honors program, we offer those for those students that are high achieving. Uh, these are smaller classes. Uh, so our average class size is 20. But even with our honors program, it's even smaller, uh, where students get to participate in more of a discussion based uh, uh, curriculum or, you know, uh, style where they get to in, in interact more closely with professors, definitely do more research opportunities with our honors students. So really quickly, as I end my section here, I do want to just highlight some of our options as far as admissions. We are test blind. So if you haven't heard what test blind is, basically that means we're not looking at the test scores, either SAT or ACT uh, for admissions or scholarships. Um, what, what that means is we, we are, we'll do a holistic review. We'll review the following materials, the transcript, looking at rigor, looking at the GPA, letters of recommendation from your fellow teachers and, um, and uh, counselors, as well as your essay. And then these are our deadlines that are coming up for the next upcoming year. Uh, and hopefully when students get accepted, you know, we have offered some great merit scholarships. We also, I just wanted to kind of point out, there might be supplemental items for those students that want to go into music and media. And they also offer great scholarship for our students. So definitely take a look at us. We offer some great athletic scholarships. We are Division I NAIA. But that will wrap up my time. And thank you very much. And I'll head it to the next presenter. Thank you so much, Ricky. And next is Janet from Wesleyan University. Good, uh, good evening all. My name is Janet Ortiz. I'm an assistant dean of admission at Wesleyan University. Um, Wesleyan is a small liberal arts college. We're located in between New York City and Boston, the town that's in the middle of New York City and Boston, Middletown, Connecticut. Um, it is a small size city for sure. Um, it has a main street though that is really booming. It has about 75 restaurants and stores, anything from Thai food to Ethiopian food to Tibetan food. So there's a really like solid variety um, in Middletown, Connecticut as well. But admittedly, a lot of your time will be spent on our campus. Um, and here's just an aerial shot of campus. Um, you can pretty much see most of campus in this one shot. Um, it is very walkable, I would say end to end, probably 15, 20 minutes, depending on how tall you are, how long your legs are, I guess. Um, and definitely, um, you know, a very friendly campus for walking, biking, skating. You can have a car on campus as a student. It definitely is not necessary, but totally up to you to decide if you would like to bring one with you. Um, Overall, I think the biggest thing to know about Wesleyan is that we do have an open curriculum. And so this is, you know, our academic program that we offer. Um, two of the requirements within the open curriculum is that you have to have 32 credits by the time that you graduate, one class equals one credit. And you also have to complete a major course of study by the time that you graduate. Um, those two things I would say are relatively easy to do. Um, students really aren't worrying about not completing their major, not having enough credits. Um, in fact, I think they're even more excited by the fact that they have about a thousand cho choices each year to choose from um, in terms of classes, lots of options, um, and you can do things well beyond your declared major. Um, students have about two years to really explore within their own areas and other areas before they declare their major. So lots of time for experimentation and figuring out what you want to eventually major in. But from there, it is really easy to add another major, add a minor, change your previous major. Um, so flexibility is really the name of the game. Um, we have a eight to one student to faculty ratio. So lots of opportunities to get involved and in building relationships with your professors as well. 
Arts is certainly something that is pretty prevalent on campus. This is the Center for the Arts, which I just want to highlight because it was left off of that previous aerial shot, which you didn't see, but certainly one of the things that you can find in abundance on our campus. One of our um, student theater groups called Second Stage, they do a really great job. It's all student directed theater run. Um, actually, Lynn manuel Miranda, when he was a senior at Wesleyan, wrote his senior thesis in the Heights, and it was produced by Second Stage. Um, again, completely top to bottom run by students. Uh, many resources here on our campus from a Gordon Career Center to the Writing Center. We have a Math Analysis, Quantitative Analysis Center. Um, another one I like to highlight is always the Resource Center, which is really a multicultural center. Anyone from any sort of marginalized community can come here and look for resources. They also are um, the center that promotes and organizes First Things First, which is our pre-orientation program for first-generation students. Um, and just a list of programming that they've offered in the past year as well. Our residence halls and our program houses and other options in senior year, I think, are pretty distinctive. Um, students usually end up living in the dorms in their first year. In their second year, a new option of program houses opens up, which is theme-based housing. You can live in outhouse, which is students that for students that enjoy the outdoors. Um, there is also like film house for students that enjoy film, um, American Sign Language House, so about 30 program houses to choose from. Um, juniors are usually living in two to four person apartments and then what students really look forward to is senior year when they're living in a wood frame house and you can see this street here is lined with these wood frame houses all lived in by seniors um, and usually it's two to six of your closest friends really understanding what it's like to live a little bit on your own more independent but Wesleyan still is your landlord if your toilet breaks at two in the morning Wesleyan will be there to fix it um, so definitely some perks of living on campus and we are a fully residential campus, which is another thing to know. All students are living on campus all four years. Um, Foss Hill, I always like to mention because it is quite literally the center of campus, but also a really big focal point on our um, community on our campus to build community. Um, it's where we have commencement, graduation. It's where um, you know students will sit down and watch a baseball game. There is the baseball diamond in the middle of our campus. Um, also just a nice area to hang out, picnic, um, just enjoy the nice weather when we do have some nice weather um, going on. But community can be built in a number of different ways. At Wesleyan, there are over 200 clubs on campus, active student organizations. So lots of ways to get connected with folks. Um, Another shot of our campus here, uh, just highlighting the fall foliage, which you'll definitely see in the back. You can also see our athletic center. We are a division three institution, um, which means um, that we do recruit, but we don't offer any athletic scholarships. And we compete within the New England Small College Athletic Conference or the NESCAC. Um, but yeah, other than that, definitely feel free to reach out. I'll put my email in the chat if you want to reach out to me personally. Again, I'm Janet Ortiz, um, or you can visit bebrave.wesleyan.edu for more info. So thank you, have a great night. Thank you so much, Janet. And the last college we're gonna hear from is Denison University. All right, hi everyone. My name is Caitlin. I am gonna put my screen up. Here we go. Um, my name is Caitlin Latta. I'm one of the associate directors of admission at Denison. Denison is a small private liberal arts college located in Granville, Ohio. Here are some of the statistics about us. I'm going to talk mostly about life on the college rather than statistics, but I will point out that we are a four year residential community, which means about almost 100% of our students are living on campus all four years. As I mentioned, we are located in Granville, Ohio. There's a map of the US if you're not totally sure where Ohio is, don't worry about it. Um, and also where Granville is in the state of Ohio. Um, Granville is a very small town. You can see most of the main drag here. Um, we are about five minutes up a hill behind the pub. Granville is a really great little town. It reminds me very much of um, New England. It's based off of a Massachusetts town of the Massachusetts town of Granville. Um, it's kind of like a Stars Hall we vibe if you're into Gilmore Girls. I, you know, there's a great farmer's market that happens. A lot of great little restaurants, coffee shops. You can often see professors and students meeting there. And our students really love having this so accessible to them. 
while we're located in a small town, we are about 40 or so minutes from Columbus. So that first slide said that we're 25. I'll give it a little more just because it depends on where you're going. Columbus is a great, great place. It's, uh, as you can see here, it has over 2 million people. It's the capital of this state. It's the 14th largest city in the country. If you are into art, there's great art in Columbus. If you're into sports, great sports. If you're into food, who's not into food? There's great food in Columbus. Um, lots of young people because Ohio State is in Columbus as well. And overall, Columbus is just a wonderful gem that I think people um, kind of forget about or just don't know about. So our students really love having access to Columbus because it provides them with a lot of um, extracurricular and professional opportunities. And then they also have, you know, the best of both worlds, big city of Columbus, small town of Granville. And between the two, there are quite a few cities or, you know, larger suburbs, smaller cities as well. A um, little bit about who we are at Denison. At Denison, we are highly relational. Um, so you can see on this slide about 92% of Denison students say that they have a mentor or they found a mentor while they were at Denison um, compared to about 22% of students nationwide. I'll put an asterisk and say 92% of students find at least one mentor because most students say that they find two to three mentors. So sometimes that's a really formal mentor and an academic advisor. Other times that's just you know a professor that you get to know well. Because our classes are quite small, less than 1% of classes have 30 students or more there's barely space like there's barely a physical space on campus for classes that are that big you're really going to get to know your professors and your fellow students this is a very collaborative learning experience um, it is also the kind of place where you know the president walks around he knows your name you know his so again just highly relational we have a lot of very traditional liberal arts programs at Denison um, but some of our newer programs um, and kind of more of the pragmatically approached programs are school our programs like data analytics health exercise and sports studies global commerce so those are just um, programs that are a little bit harder to find on schools our side not impossible but something that makes Denison a little different definitely is that pragmatic kind of pre-professional approach to the liberal arts in terms of outside the classroom, there are over 165 different student organizations at Denison, literally anything you can think of. And if you can think of it and we don't have it, you can create the club yourself. Um, but one big program or one you know kind of big co-curricular is athletics. So like Wesleyan, we're division three as well. Um, we tend to have a lot of uh, athletic um, success and support, I suppose. Um, so this is a pretty athletically spirited campus, especially for a school of our size. About a third of the student body is a varsity athlete at Denison. Um, but you know, regardless of your athletic ability, you can get involved and take advantage of um, everything that there is in the, this building, the Mitchell Center, which is really beautiful. While the arts are, sorry, while athletics are a huge part of who we are, the arts are as well. So as you can see about the same number of students are involved in musical ensembles um, at Denison. So this is a place where the arts are highly, highly, highly valued. Um, and I love that balance between athletics and the arts at Denison. I think that's something that's a little bit harder to find, certainly not impossible, but harder to find at a lot of schools. Um, so this is our newest building on campus, the Michael D. Eisner Center for the Performing Arts. It's the new home from, you know, theater, dance, music, just a really wonderful, really cool building, actually. I could nerd out about that alone for six minutes. Um, Here's some information on admission. I will point out mostly two things and you can read the rest. We are test optional, have been for over 10 years, will be, I think, forever. Um, and we meet 100% of demonstrated need. Um, so if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Um, thank you so much for coming. And I will put my information in the chat. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And we have just a few minutes left uh, of our time. So if, uh, if you have other questions, drop them in the chat now. And um, or put them in the Q&A feature and our admission officers will be able to answer them uh, as we continue. And if they're not able to get to all of your questions um, during the session, uh, they'll likely be able to follow up with you later or you can always reach out to the admission offices directly. But um, if all of my colleagues could um, turn their cameras on and maybe we'll just go round robin 30 seconds or so to give a little bit of advice to, to someone who's just getting started in their, their college search or about to to really embark on that. Let's start with Jan again from Vanderbilt. 
All right, thank you. Um, as we are wrapping up here, um, I'd like to encourage students to come up with their list of uh, things that make um, a university a fit for them. Uh, that means thinking through, imagining yourself uh, at Vanderbilt or another place, it would be your academic, your social, your cultural home, seeing yourself there and what resonates with you, what's important to you. It could be academics. Do they have the program that you want? Or do you want to be able to dabble and explore? Cost of financial aid should be on your list in terms of fit, things that are important. What about culture, diversity, food? Um, what about requiring a language? Um, maybe four years of a language in high school. Um, all of those kind of things uh, are important to think about geography, the weather. And it's important to understand that fit for one school might be different from fit for another school. Use your online resources and get to know um, the universities you're interested in. I was muted. Thanks, Jan. Jason from Wheaton. Thanks. Um, my piece of advice is so boring and not fun, but it is to organize yourself uh, as best you can. You'll thank yourself later on, uh, later on in the process. When you're visiting campuses, make a folder for, uh, for pictures that you take uh, for each institution uh, so you can remember what that campus looks like. Uh, make you know note folders in your phone uh, and add to that as you learn more things about uh, the institutions that you're applying to and researching. Um, the last thing you want in the latter part of your senior year when you're super busy and have a lot going on is to be wondering which schools were associated with which facts and which picture, pictures. Um, so, so organize yourself in any way that you can. It, you will be thanking yourself later on down the line. Uh, it'll make your process more enjoyable and much less stressful. Thanks so much. Mason from the University of Chicago. Thanks, Josh. Uh, so I know a lot of us talked about our test optional policies. And I, you know, if someone's thinking, you know, do I share it? Do I not? You know, uh, some advice on how to think about test optional. Um, so imagine your application is like a pizza. There are some parts of a pizza for the sake of argument that are required. You, know, you just need them to make a pizza. You need a crust, you need a sauce, you need cheese, right? It could be lactose-free cheese, but there's got to be cheese. And uh, but and those are things like your transcript, the actual application itself, right? There's prior pieces. If you didn't have them, we have an incomplete pizza or application. Uh, but then there's toppings you can put on your pizza, and we'll take whatever toppings you want to put on your pizza. You know that is up to you. You get to decide what toppings you want to put on your pizza. So let's say mushrooms are testing. If you have mushrooms and there's some awesome mushrooms, throw them on that pizza. We'll be glad to to eat them. Uh, if you don't have mushrooms, do not worry. There are lots of other toppings you can put on your pizza, like uh, you know, an interview if they offer it, or a music supplement, or an additional letter of recommendation, or you can, there are optional pieces uh, that you can put in application. Um, uh, if you have mushrooms, but they're old mushrooms, they're like months old, and you would rather not use them, that's okay too. You don't have to use a topping just because you have it. Um, so use the very best toppings that you have on your pizza, and, and we'll be excited to, to eat that pizza. Thanks, Mason. Ricky from Loyola University, New Orleans. Yes, uh, I, I tell students and families, especially now as you're starting your process of searching schools, check out the net price calculator. There's some great resources under financial aid uh, because, you know, looking at tuition, looking at scholarships, those should be, uh, you know, some of the, the first questions you should be asking. Net price calculators basically is a way where you students can put in their uh, family's income and kind of get an idea of what kind of financial aid they can receive. Also, a lot of them will have scholarship calculators. Put in that GPA if the school's test optional or require test scores. Put a test score. We're test blind, so just put the GPA and you can kind of see what kind of scholarships you can get offered. And that's, again, driving those preliminary conversations. Thanks, Ricky. Wesley and Janet. Yeah, um, so the one that I usually give is just talk to current students. I think that is kind of the best indicator. Um, but I really like there is a question here about what's one of the biggest mistakes you think students make. I think it from Christopher um, and I would love to answer this and I would just say, I think what students sometimes get wrapped in is like thinking that there's a perfect school or like they might have a dream school, of course, but thinking that there's one school for them. Um, and honestly, I would say college is what you make of it. There will be resources and opportunities at every single institution. Um, so wedding yourself to one school or one dream and, and putting all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak, um, I think 
can be a little bit emo- much emotionally, uh, much more emotionally taxing than I think it needs to be. Um, so yeah, that's what I would offer. Thanks, Janet. And Caitlin, we'll let you wrap things up. Yes. Um, what to say that everyone hasn't said. Honestly, I'll just piggyback on Janet and say, like, there is a school for everyone. You will find a place. You will make it what it is. And if it's not the first place, you can always transfer, right? It's not, you know, one and done forever. So I'm a transfer student and I loved that process. That's that's my advice. Thanks so much, Caitlin. And thank you to all of our panelists for sharing with us this evening. We really appreciate that. And thank you to those of you for joining us, uh, students, parents, counselors. Um, we really appreciate uh, seeing you. So when you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is uh, just one of many sessions. There's one more session coming up after this. So sign up to hear from some other universities. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as recordings of all of the other sessions at strivescan.com slash B-A-C-S. And thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. I'm going to go have some pizza. Thank you. Bye. Bye.